All right, people, like I said, look what she's, look what they said, though. I can't give you what I got. You got to get it yourself. Now, listen. That goes for every believer. I can't give you what I got. You can't give me what you got. Now, I can spread the word, but you got to receive this message yourself. It's in your heart and your soul. You got to believe it. You got to trust it. You got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Just because your wife is going to church every Sunday, that don't mean you saved, and it really don't mean she saved. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. You got to work out your own salvation, people. <laughs> oh, uh, I ain't worried. My husband, a believer, he praying for me. Are you praying for yourself? Are you working out your salvation? They don't think like that, people. And while they went to buy, they waited too long. The bridegroom came, and then they were ready, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord. So it's another verse that sounds like that. Lord, Lord, haven't we done this and that in your name? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. But though he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch. Therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour where the Son of Man cometh. Hmm. Be ready at all times. Does it make sense? Why I say place your cross on first every day? Why I say do this every day? Not just Sunday or Wednesday. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And until one, he gave five talents. I like that he used the word talents. <laughs> to another two. And to another one. Now, let's, let me, I tell me that's in my head. He said, seek the best gifts. Prophecy, tongues, all these other spiritual gifts. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all else be added to you. Does it make sense? What about the fruits of the spirit? Love, compassion, this and that. I ain't say nothing about materialism. Just letting you know this. These are the kind of gifts, the kind of talents you want. But if you don't use that talent, let's keep going. And it's a one he gave five talents to another two and to another one. To every man according to his several ability. So everybody got an ability and straightway took his journey. Jesus left. Then he had... He that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. That's like you taking the, let's say you take the Bible, you know Jesus, you just don't spread it. You don't spread the word. You just, I'm just worried about myself. Oh. But freely you have give, received, freely you should give. I know I'm kind of throwing, talking over your head and stuff. But you said you can't say nobody else. But this is part of your duty. They're going to have to work on their talents. They're going to have to work on their abilities. Mm -hmm. To every man according to his several ability. Then he that received five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained the other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them when Jesus come returns. And to think about it, when you die, the still rule apply. Let's say you die before the coming of Christ. It's still going to be the same. The same rules apply. And so that he had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, he said, basically, you got a bad fruit. They just dropped in my head. Sowing the seed. The fourth stage. Some brought forth fruit. Some tenfold. Some a hundredfold. And it's my good pleasure that you bear fruit. If you're not bearing any fruit, guess what he's going to do? He's going to do you like the fig tree. Bear no more. Oh, yes. Yes, people. Know the word. Feed my sheep, says the Lord. And so he that had received five talents came 
and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained, gained beside them five talents. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things into thou into the joy of the Lord. Now think about this, people. There are going to be different positions in the kingdom, in the kingdom of heaven. And you know that's what you're working on right now? What your position is going to be in there? Because Jesus said, Hey, Lord, let me sit on your right hand. It's not for me to do that. It's already, it's up to the Father to tell you where you're going to be. <laughs> yeah, for everybody that thinks when you get to heaven, you're just going to be with your mother and father dancing and singing. You got positions. You got, according to the work that you did on this earth. Even though your work can't make you to heaven, but it's determined where your position is. Right? Same way as a job now. <laughs> Well done, done, good. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the, the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. So, so you went from one talent to two? You went from speaking in tongues to prophesying? You went from prophesying to preaching? Oh, Lord, you're doing good. You got two talents. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee the rule over many things. Enter down to the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee, that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid. And when he hid thy, I hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thy dying. Is dying. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful, you lazy son of a gun, servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have straw, have not straw. Thou art as therefore to have put out my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he have. Now to think about it, I'm not talking about materialism and material gifts. I'm not talking about that, people. God ain't talking about that either. So to you prosperity gospels, you can't buy your way into heaven. But you can seek after spiritual things. Remember, fruits of the Spirit, gifts of the Spirit. That's what you should be focusing on. Not how big your house is. <laughs> Not how much money you got in your pocket. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> so is he that rich. You have received your reward. You see people. You got to know the word. Prosperity gospel prospers nobody. <laughs> All right. Here it is. The fruit. Hope you can eat it. Which is the word of God. When the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And people call themselves goats now. They must be crazy. Greatest of all times. That's what it means. Goats. What's sheep stand for? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I know it stands for a child of the most high God. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger, and fed thee, or thirst, and gave thee drink? When saw ye we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, or clothed thee? Or when we saw thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, And as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. 
Remember the Bible says, be careful to entertain strangers. You may be entertaining, entertaining an angel unaware. And also the Bible says, don't touch not my anointed and do my prophets no hard harm. When you mess with God's people, you're messing with him. You know? Then says he say also unto them, on the left hand, depart, depart from me. You cursed and everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Actually, uh, prepare for you too. For I was a hunger and you gave me meat. <laughs> I was a thirst and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in. Naked and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered? or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteousness into the eternal life. Now God gave us a lot of instructions. Now if you want to, there are other, other scriptures on the sheep and the goats, and there are scriptures on how to treat people. I ain't giving that drunk. You need to get you some money. You broke ass. Yeah, that's how y'all be talking. <laughs> you need to get you a job, you low down, dirty scoundrel. You all you gonna do is buy crack. <laughs> all you gonna, I ain't giving you no money for no food. You hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just gonna work with the people in the church house. I ain't gonna worry about the people in the streets. Cause this is my family here. God said, Who is your neighbor? He like the man willing to adjust him and said, Well, who is my neighbor? There was a Samaritan. Thieves came upon him. And they stripped him and they left him for dead. And a Levite came by. And the Levite walked around the other side of the street. Then a, another man came by, a Jew or something, I can't remember, came by, he walked on the other side of the street, but a Samaritan came by, and he saw the man, and he took him to a hotel, and he paid for it, and he said, hey, if he owe anything, by the time I come back, I would pay for you, who was neighbor to him? <laughs> come on, people. I tell y'all all the time. God tells y'all all the time because I work for him. How to treat people. Show no respect to persons. You looking at these people like they pieces of trash. You don't know what been through them. Look at he said. Thieves came upon them, but you just saw them on the ground. Think about the biggest thief in the world. The devil. He didn't rob them and beat them and beat them down to the ground. And you finna beat them down some more. Now, I ain't saying you got to give every time you see somebody. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's easy to give. But eventually you got to speak to these people too. They say you go to the grocery store, you go to the same service station, the same person there every time. Begging, begging, begging. Eventually you got to pull a number like Peter did. Silver and gold I have none. But since it's I have do, do have, I give to you. Let me pray for you. Lord, please pray that they get out their feet and get a job and be able to take care of themselves, Lord. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Giving a dollar here and there does assist people. But prayer of a righteous man or a woman availeth much. But you can do both. Do you understand, people? But God will tell you discernment. Because you, I, I pass by a lot of people homeless and all the time. I be like, Lord. And I'd be like, I'd be in a hurry, not in a hurry, I'd be my own way somewhere. I'd be like, but sometimes in a hurry, I'm like, Lord Jesus, I can't do that. I say a quick prayer in my head for him. Or I'm like, Lord, stop, send somebody his way. You know, it's it's it works both ways. You gotta be both. You gotta be able to give spiritually and physically to people. <laughs> both. Because you can't buy your heaven. Because a lot of people who don't believe in God help the poor. So we know just giving money to the poor or get giving donations to different organizations like Taylor Swift don't guarantee you a seat in heaven. You got to have Jesus because there's nothing without Jesus. You don't even know why you're doing it because you're honoring yourself. I give to charities. 
Oprah, but you denounce God, Jesus Christ. All that given, thank you. But what the Bible said, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. Thank you. All things work together for those who believe and love God. Thank you for your wicked money. <laughs> but you still going to go to hell if you don't give your life over to Christ because you can't buy your way into heaven. So you need the spirit. You need to be operating in the spirit. You need to be realizing why you're doing these. And you got to do it out of a good heart. Not expecting to receive anything in return. God gives us so many examples of how to walk and talk and be and do. A lot of people just don't listen because they don't read the word. Just like the 5,000 being fed. I can't eat this. I can't swallow that pill. Bye. I thought I was coming for the fish fry and the food and gifts like Judas. Hey, we could have used that all to make some more money. Jesus probably like, boy, Judas, when are you going to? Oh, you ain't going to get it. Judas, Judas, he got so fed up with Judas, whatever you're going to do, do it now, man. And Satan entered in him. <laughs> that demon that been in and out of him. And think about it. A demon sitting right next to Jesus. You think because you're a Christian that demons can't sit next to you? That the devil can't be next to you? Read the Bible. <laughs> you think it's because that's a church? That there's no demons in there? Something wrong with you. You better read the Bible. Judas was a devil. He said, when are you a devil? So the devil was hanging with Jesus the whole time. That snake. Yeah. Jesus never sinned. It didn't bother him. You're trying to get to the point where you can just stand right in front of the devil's face. Whatever you're going to do, do it then. Stop making threats to me. I already know you sold the gold. I mean, you want the gold. And go do it. Go snitch, son. You snitch, you. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> God is trying to strengthen you so you can be like Jesus. You can walk through devils and demons and not be hurt and not sin. Now, does it make sense, Houston? I mean, y'all, I tell you, I go up there and visit my kids sometimes. Their mother is still a witch, but I'm still a Christian. How does that work? When you're converted, strengthen the brother. Feed my sheep, said Peter. I mean, God to Peter. You're going to be able to tread upon serpents. And if anything shall bite you, it shall not harm you. Paul getting bit by a snake like, he's a god. No, he ain't. He said, serve the most high God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, a lot of y'all are weak. Mm -hmm. if, if the shoe fits, wear it. I was watching a lot of Christians when the Grammys was going on. All the war shows. And they were like, it's no, them Christian folks shouldn't be up there with them devils. He said, I will send you the kings and rulers for my sake. <laughs> what you think I'm supposed to do? Just stay, if God exalts you, think about Peter went from dealing with the Gentiles and the lower class to all the way to talking to Caesar and everybody else, while the, the major demons and devils are, <laughs> the rulers and powers of this world in high places. The thing is, don't be taken over by these high places like T.D. Jakes. Don't be taken over by these high places like Kurt Franklin. Don't be taken over by these high places like Joel Osteen, Kanye West. The list goes on. I can name you a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. Houston, you're judging. No, I'm paying attention. Because you said watch. If God gives you the ability to move up, guess what? You move up and not be like them. Pharisees and scribes. He started from don't be like them. Don't be up there like you're this. Like you're just the best thing in the world. But if God is lifting you up to be able to be in a position to reach the higher ups. Because look how strong you're getting. But this don't get weak when you get there. Some of y'all have meant to go before kings and rulers. And the kings and rulers of this world is Hollywood. Music industry. 
politics. So why wouldn't God lift you up or me up to be in a position where I can reach the Drakes, where I can reach the Snoop Dogs? I'm a musician. I'm talking for myself now. I can reach the Will Smiths and Jezebel's Pinkett Smiths, the Kim Kardashians. But he said to keep not company with them. But I must be about my father's business. I didn't come to Jesus. I didn't come to save the righteous, but the sinner. You see, I was watching the video. I was like, man, I, I, I didn't see too many people even say what I just said. And I'm not saying I'm smarter than anybody else. But I was like, why are they beating these people up? God put them on that platform to give glory and, God, glory and honor to God. And they did it. What's the name of that group out of Atlanta, Georgia? And God is proud of them for that. But y'all, non-believers, you shouldn't be there as a Christian. Why shouldn't you be there? Just because you're sitting there don't mean you're keeping company with them. You ain't there to do what the Lord wants you to do, to be a light in a dark place. But don't let that darkness overshadow you, people. I worry about this all the time. I'm like, Lord, I really don't want to be good in music. But if your music, if your music prosper, Houston, what you think you're going to do? But you know what? I be thinking, I'm like, man, do I have to take a Grammy? I'm just saying, if something like that was to happen, I think like that. Like, like you know what? Little children, keep yourself from idols. <laughs> <laughs> Glory be to the Most High God. God want to put me in the WWE. You the new champion. What are you going to do with this belt? Nothing. Glory be to God. And all things you glorify Him. Boxers. Glory be to God. UFC stars. Glory be to God. Rappers. Glory be to God. Singers, glory be to God. Competence, glory be to God. The, the list goes on. God got Christians in every walk of life. I'm learning this over the years. And I, what I know, I'm going to let you know. You see, there's a lot of weak Christians out there. They want to hide their talent in the dirt. They want to hide their gifts. I just want to worry about me. I ain't worried about everybody else. God's like, I'm going to take what you got and give it to somebody else. You work at Walmart? How many times you talked about God at Walmart, but you're a Christian? You work at Steak and Shake, In-N-Out Burger, Water Burger, Burger King? How many times did you talk about Jesus to somebody at your job? How many times did you utilize your ministry? But you're a Christian, though. You work at a convenience store? Why is you telling everybody that come in there, God bless you? Have a blessed day. Why is you praying for those people in your head when they come up to your, your, your register? Why are you judging them? Mm -hmm. But you go to church on Sunday. Ain't even the Sabbath. But you think you're doing something special. You think you're better than me. You think you're better than other people who don't go to church on Sunday who know the truth. None against the preachers. But it's the truth. Are you honoring the Sabbath? You're honoring Sunday. But are you honoring the Sabbath day? But this is a good way to do it. Put your cross on first every day. And you will honor the Sabbath. You will. If you if you live for God every day, you will honor the Sabbath. You know that, right? <laughs> so whether you go to church on Sunday or not, but are you honoring the Sabbath? Are you honoring every day of the week? But are you honoring the Sabbath? He made the Sabbath. Are you honoring the Sabbath? Yes. Oh, I don't work. I don't do nothing. But what if your brother calls you and say he needs some help on the Sabbath day? What you going to do? Man, it's my Sabbath day. I can't do no work on the Sabbath. If one of your sheep fell in a ditch, but you're not on the Sabbath day, go get it. 
You see, you got to know how the word works. You shouldn't be chasing after money and riches on the Sabbath. But if somebody needs help on the Sabbath, you help them. Let's say somebody come to your door on the Sabbath day. I'm so hungry and you got no food ready to cook for. You know, it's very simple. How to line up with God's words and God's commandments. Because God is a great God. And he's a good God. And he's teaching us to be good people. Through him. Do you understand what I'm saying? None is good but God. So the only way we can become good or righteous is through God. He's trying to transform us to the image of the Most High God. When God fed all those people with the fish, think about it. He fed thousands. And he knew that thousands were going to left off following him. But he still fed them. That's why I get up and do these videos every morning. That's what God put on my heart to do. I don't know what God has put on your heart to do. This is what he tells me to do every morning when I get up. I got a gym and I'm like, Lord, I want to start working out. And then uh, I start getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning. He's like, yeah, I'm going to work you out, all right. Read this word. <laughs> Ex bodily exercise profited little, says the Lord. But I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I used to get up at 6. God has got me waking up at 5. And I get up at 5 now and I, I still go straight to that word. I'm like, man, am I ever going to work out? And it's, it's crazy. The Lord's like, I got you. You got me. Okay. All right. It ain't time yet. And I know some of y'all like, so you mean to tell me, did God tell you not to work out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're telling me, don't worry about that right now. You know, I ain't touched that gym in about months. And I done lost 20 pounds. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Amazing. God's like, what? You been praying to lose weight? <laughs> I got you. And then after you lose the weight, I'm going to put you in that gym. Because <laughs> I'm preparing you for something. Now, you is different. He said, I will give you the desires of your heart. My desire is one day to have a six pack. In my whole life, I never had <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being real. I'm 42 years old. Want to get a six pack? About to be 43, but I do. I, I want it. You know what I'm saying? Not to be seen or nothing like that. You probably never see the six pack. You probably never see the muscles, cause God ain't telling me to show my body off. Mm, you'll never see it. Hopefully, unless I'm at the beach and you there. But God don't make us to taunt our bodies. Yeah, God wants to be in good health and things like that. God is a good God, people. And you think God ain't got a sense of humor? He do. What he said, I laugh at the wicked. Yeah, he do got a sense of humor. <laughs> Why do you think we got a sense of humor? But he said jesting is wrong. You know when you're bullying and making fun of people. Foolish jesting. Just for, just for GP. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure Jesus, when he sat around with the disciples, he probably made them laugh. They probably laughed and cried and did all kind of things together with Jesus. I was watching a video, the third person was like, if you had a chance to get $5 million or see Jesus, what would you do? I'd take the $5 million. Well, I guess you'll take hell. But that's most people. I'd rather take Jesus. I'd take Jesus over anything. Mm -hmm. Over my kids, over my mom, my daddy, my workplace, myself. I want Jesus in my life. Don't you want Jesus in your life? What's money when you got Jesus? That's what Judas fell break, break, victim to, I guess. He was a child of Judas, not child of Judas, child of the devil, like Judas, like the Pharisee, uh, like the goats. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. and there are many goats in this world, but there are many saints, there are many Christians, there are many Israelites, there are many Jews, there are many Gentiles, there are many colors, there are many ethnicities, there are many languages, one body. How are we one body? Because the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And we're going to become a one accord. And if the Holy Spirit is not dwelling in them, you're not going to be a one accord with them. But you will be a one accord with other believers. And sometimes it's not going to be the people in your family who you want them to be. They're going to be people who God wants it to be. You know, I'm going to tell you all something right now and I'm going to end with that. We need to start praying as people for what we need. Praying for God to give us what we need. And you need to be seeking after spiritual things. Stop seeking after carnal things. Playstations and all that will come. But you need to be seeking after spiritual things, people. 
He's going to bless you. But you got to think about it. I got like five game systems in here. And I don't even use them. And I wanted them so bad. I only use them when I go visit my kids or something. I might take one with me and be like, hey, hey. And I, and I have it here just in case somebody, some kids come over or something. And I'll play it every once in a while. But it's like my biggest pet peeve is TV. And, you know, I love television. And it's one of my weaknesses. And I'm trying to fight that too. You understand? That's my biggest one, you know. But it's weird because I'm starting to realize that all things work together for God. So I can be watching a movie that don't seem like it's spiritual and get some spiritual guidance. It's weird how when you grow in Christian, you start seeing God and everything. You know, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> That's why I know a lot of people ain't figured it out. Because I ain't even figured it out all the way out. But I done figured a lot of things out through the help of the Holy Spirit and through God. Glory be to God. I don't know nothing. My father know everything. And he said he'll send a comforter who will bring all things in remembrance. So what my father know, when he want me to know it, he'll let me know it. And he'll let you know it too. I'm no better than you. I'm no better than nobody else. I'm just a man trying to get to heaven. I'm just a man trying to spread the message. That's all I am. I'm a servant just like you are. I'm nobody greater than nobody. Mm. You understand? And I had to learn this over years. And don't be a goat. Be a sheep. And if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ in your life, I advise you to do so and start the process. Have a blessed day. Keep God in the forefront of every day of your life under the Sabbath. Ask your preacher. What's the real Sabbath day? That's a mission. I, like I so said, I like going to church too. But it's like every time I start going, I'll be like, man, it's the, it's the devil driving me away from church. God be like, Houston, you go to church every day. I know that you got to be, you got to, uh, don't forsake the assembly of the saints. Y'all saints got it wrong. You know, he said, well, two are joined together in my name. I would be in the midst of them. As soon as you get on this video and watch it, or that video on three, that's two. If you sitting at your job and one of your co-workers come up here and y'all start talking about God, that's church. I don't know where people get this from. That's them trying to be Pharisee and hypocrites, and I'm going to finish with that. Have a blessed day, people.